you know the Guilfords. Oh, dear friends. So good to have you with us. What's going on at Brandeis? Well, it is a Louis Armstrong memorial concert, and I think the artists were selected on the basis of the fact that they knew Louis, had worked with Louis. I remember in 1952, Louis was guest at the American Club in Paris, and I was present at the same function. And I said, Louis, could you play the chorus on Ain't Misbehavin', which I had on the first record of yours that I ever bought? He says, Larry, I can't remember that far back. I said, I can. And I played it, and Louis, in his autobiography, said that I played it note for note. Whether or not I did, I'm not sure. But tonight, at the concert at Brandeis, I'm going to do two choruses of Ain't Misbehavin', one my own, the second, what I remember of Louis. Now, Sarah Vaughan worked with Louis, of course. Yubi Blake, well, Yubi worked with everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess Yubi's 93. I think he worked with Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I'm going to, uh, Yubi, Sarah, and I, and also Lucille Armstrong. Oh, yes. Who was in the chorus of a show that I was in called Flying Colors. Oh, gee. Arthur Schwartz and Howard Eats wrote the show. And we had a song in it. I don't think we could have that song in a show today. It was called Smoke and Reefers. It was a three-minute plug for marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> what was this? This was a show called Flying Colors, 1931. Monette Moore sang it. Clifton Webb was in the show. Tamara Java, Charles Butterworth, Patsy Kelly. Yeah. And I thought, because I remember Howard Dietz and Arthur Schwartz playing me the score, and I thought the whole show was going to be built around me because they kept playing number after number. And I proved of all those numbers. I was 16 years old. I thought it was logical they should build a show around me. <laughs> I ended up as a backdrop to Vilma and Buddy Ebsen. <laughs> <laughs> I played Shine On Your Shoes. They did. You would never have known I was in the show at all. What are some of the things you remember about Louis personally that we'd like to hear? Well, I first heard Louis. I was going to choir practice in Baltimore, and when I went into the synagogue, there was this black band rehearsing, and I listened to this trumpet, and I had never heard anything like it in my life, and that was my first sight of Louis. Then we worked together time and time again, and we always wanted to record together. And there was a man named Milt Gabler in New York who had the mm. idea, yes. you knew Milt, yes. of course, had the idea of having Louie and me do a joint album, which I would have loved to do, and it never got made. I'm really sorry about that. That would have been an that. unusual sound, wouldn't yes. it? No, there was, there's another great regret that I must tell you about. I once went on strike at Paramount. I was 18 then. I didn't want to work with Guy Lombardo. I held out for Duke Ellington. <laughs> I was, getting, I was getting $300 for the whole picture, no matter how long that picture lasted. All I was going to get was $300. I still refused to do this scene. And somehow or other, this temperamental, snotty little kid, which I was, held out for and got Duke Ellington. We did Sophisticated Lady together. Now, Duke's manager said, how would you like to record with the Duke? And I said, great. And he offered me a deal, 50 sides at $25 a side. I'd read in Variety that week that Bing Crosby got 5% royalty. So I said to Duke's manager, I want 5% royalty. And he told me what I could do with my 5% royalty. <laughs> and those records never got made. Did you and Jack ever work together? No. No, but you mentioned Barney I, Josephson a minute ago. Yes, I worked at Cafe Society downtown when it was open, and you worked at the Uptown place I worked years at the later. Uptown. Right. I did too. But, uh, uh, so we never even didn't meet, but we were, worked in the same room. <laughs> yes, right? but you know what amazes me? See, Jack has remained in the United States and is an absolute part of the American scene. I went to England in '49, and have just been coming back to America recently, and it amazes me. And my ego can't quite take the fact that although I've been in show business 51 years, if you're under 30, you probably never heard of me. Yeah. And every time I play, most of the people who are hearing me are hearing me for the first time. But your yeah. influence and Louis' influence is, I mean, it's, it's in our music of today. Well, I certainly influence the mouth organ players uh, because I'm going to be playing the colleges, and I want to play the colleges. I want to get at the young audience, and I've just been playing at the cookery in New York, and I'm absolutely amazed that the young people who come in who play the mouth organ, and they don't play the kind that I play, they don't play the mouth organ with the sharps and flats, they play the blues, the kind that Bob Dylan plays and yeah. Stevie Wonder and so forth. But I would have thought I, I was an old middle-aged or elderly square, but they accept what I do, and I'm very surprised and very gratified.